He came out of nowhere to nearly score a first round knockout. Francois Fillon flattening the field in France's first ever primaries of the center and right. Unassuming in his five years as Nicolas Sarkozy's prime minister, will ask who is this 62 year old conservative who mounted a late surge that stole Sarkozy's thunder and on 44% of the vote makes next Sunday's runoff seem like a formality. These were open primaries. Some left-wing voters, with their camp in disarray, came out. They see this primary as the real first round of next spring's presidential poll. Now they've got the probability of a mainstream candidate who voted against gay marriage and has pledged a Thatcher-style streamlining of government versus a far-right leader who's taken her party away from stigmatizing gay, more towards uh, safeguarding the social safety net. And if it is Fillon versus Le Pen next spring on foreign policy, both agree on their fondness for Vladimir Putin. Just how far to the right is France ready to turn? Today in the France 24 debate, is François Fillon France's next president? With us to talk about it, Béatrice de Monti, a spokesperson for the campaign who splits her time between London and Paris. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Good evening. We're also pleased, as always, to welcome back uh, Philippe Moreau-Chevrolet. Good evening, François. Columnist, political consultant. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. All right. Did you see this coming? No. <laughs> right. I must admit, no. All right. As, mo as most people. All right. Bruno Cotres, who heads the French Political Science Institute, Sciences Po's Sevi Path Polling Studies Research Wing. Uh, thank you for being with us. Good evening. You didn't see it coming. You did see it coming. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Let's more. See. Yes. More on that in a moment. The France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter. The hashtag F24 debate. Yeah, it's been a year of insurgents. Few expected the man rivals called Mr. Nobody or Droopy because of his dour demeanor to play the upstart in this campaign. Not only did Francois Fillon play the upstart, uh, but uh, he won by almost a landslide in the first round. Uh, saint am Chantier has more. He may be a surprise front-runner after Sunday's vote, but he's no newcomer to politics. In his speech on Sunday, François Fillon played his cards carefully, paying homage to his defeated rival, who'd later endorse him. I want to thank those that have shown their support tonight. And I also spare a special thought for Nicolas Sarkozy, who was once the president of France. When Fillon was Sarkozy's prime minister, his former boss referred to him as his collaborator, though on several occasions he took charge, proof that he was a politician who pulls no punches. I'm at the head of a bankrupt state. And that view has returned as the backbone of Fillon's manifesto. I've always told the truth that France is in a state of bankruptcy. It's a view that has won over conservative voters. During his campaign, Fillon has been promising far-reaching reforms to boost the economy. He's also distinguished himself by opposing the adoption of children by gay couples. On foreign policy, Fillon has championed better relations with Moscow and Tehran to defeat the Islamic State group. Beatrice de Monti, you saw this coming? That, that he would not only be in, be in front, but get 44% of the vote? Well, it, it was a very nice surprise yesterday to discover this big yeah, number, f more than 40. Um, this is a little bit what uh, François Fillon was expecting, not, not at such a big level, but he always said during the campaign that things will move at the end when the debate will start. Uh, he's been working very hard for the last three years. He's been on the field uh, meeting with people in France, meeting uh, uh, people in one-to-one -one as well, even abroad. I'm an example. I'm an entrepreneur in London, and he came to us. We had a small, one, uh, a small group with him, and he came half, uh, one year ago to listen to us. I was amazed by the, his capacity to listen, and uh, he knew that this work would pay, but at the very end. But that happened at the very, very end. So that was the big surprise. We thought it would happen maybe a month or before the election, not only two weeks before the election. All right. We heard Sam Jantier in that report say not exactly a fresh face. François Fillon first elected to parliament for his native Le Mans area way back in 1981. 
A Catholic conservative father of five, at first he opposed the depenalization of homosexuality in France. Later, though, he moved to a more socially conscious brand of Gaullism uh, before uh, taking a new tack. Uh, Philippe Morochevrolet, first of all, 1981. Yes, it's not... It's how, not how, uh, how old were you new. in 1981? Uh, I was eight years old. I mean, I was, uh, as, as everybody in France, we were um, watching on TV the first socialist president being elected. So nobody saw it coming, uh, François Fillon at the, at the time, at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's surprising that the uh, people uh, on the right chose this candidate over Nicolas Sarkozy and Alain Juppé. But it's also very logical because they didn't want Nicolas Sarkozy anymore. And the election was a little bit about outing him from from the landscape. And Alain Juppé was not charismatic enough to, to replace him, obviously. So. But François Fillon is hardly Mr. Charisma. He's, he's, he, I mean, last night... He's, he's more so charismatic than Alain Juppé. He gets 44% of the vote, <laughs> and he was very soft-spoken. Yeah, but he there was nobody there was no in jumping front up of him. And down. There was nobody in front of him, really. Alain Juppé didn't really want to campaign. In, in, on the TV, at least, he didn't campaign. He was not a good uh, performer on TV. I know you need to be a good performer. And François Fillon was a good performer on TV. He was very, uh, he, he was very presidential during the debates, and he was very nice uh, on, in, during the, in the talk shows, very close to per people. Yeah. Very presidential. Now, this is important to explain for, for our world viewers, Bruno Cotres, uh, because yeah. in France, where so much power is concentrated in the hands of one person, that's what does true. that mean to uh, be that, presidential? That's the presidential ele election, after all. It is to elect the French president. So. The, I, I would say, not exactly the charisma, but that you have the right profile, that you have the exact uh, things that the French are looking for, for a president, that you have the, 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 the shoulder big enough the pedigree. for that. Yes, exactly that. The other thing is that exactly as a... So does that make it impossible, for instance, for France to elect a Donald Trump? You, you, you can't have somebody who's a political novice hardly. or a maverick. I would say only. Uh, as you said, uh, François Fillon is not a new man in French politics. He has the experience. He has been the prime minister for Nicolas Sarkozy for five years. So what amazed me is what, indi what it, indi it indicates uh, concerning uh, the French right-wing voters. They wanted a real change. Alain Juppé looks to be the soft guy that wants to please the left and the central left. That was, I would say, that one of the major errors probably of Alain Juppé has been on the question of reducing the public sector size. Uh, François Fillon wants a very sharp reduction. Half a million of civil servant posts could... And Alain Juppé gave the, the impression to, to many rightist voters that he was not tough enough on that, which is a major issue for the right wing, which is cutting the tax, cutting a public expenditure, reducing the, the, the size of the public sector. This was extremely clear for François Fillon that he wants to do it. And I think that the right wing wanted to think a candidate that can kick out François Hollande from the Élysée, one, and secondly, a candidate who is going to do the tough reform agenda that the right wing wants. A tough reform agenda, You're, uh, that, that big uh, job slashing Thatcherite, some have called it. <clears throat> there was one precedent for that back in 1986, and... Uh, it was not so good for the right. No, the they, were, they were no. thrown out at the next election uh, two yes, years later. Yes, it indicates that it's going to be complex to deliver that in France anyway. Uh, during the campaign, François Fillon, in one interview, he was asked, so finally, are you like a French Maggie Thatcher? And he said, it's a compliment, which indicates that, yes, François Fillon wants to put on the top of the agenda a big reform of the French public sector, a big reform of what should do the French uh, state. Is it only uh, the major function of a state or welfare? We saw last June, uh, last spring, all of last spring, uh, huge demonstrations against labor reform. Uh, we've seen how uh, the far right is against this uh, slashing of jobs inside the civil service. Uh, Beatrice de Montilla, how many people in France actually support shedding half a million public sector jobs? I think that François Fillon went uh, everywhere in France and is heard the message from everyone that we want more freedom, we want to be able to uh, do our job, we want to be creative. And at the moment, 
the cost of the public sector is so hard on the companies that companies can't really expand. They can't invest anymore because they are paying too much, too much taxes. So he's heard that it's, it, and, and he knows that if we don't create jobs in the companies, we're not going to create jobs anymore in the public sector anyway. So the jobs creations are going to come from the companies. So we need to help companies. Is this the big issue of the upcoming campaign or will it be more about identity politics? I think uh, the fr French people are expecting a new president now. I think we want people who are not going to talk um, that much about party. Uh, we want someone who is uh, um, very honest. We want someone who is brave. And I think that's what people understood during but, the but last is it two more weeks, gonna that be about François these... Fillon was probably the right person for that. Is it going to be more, though, about uh, these um, issues of how you run the country economically, or is it going to be more about these identity issues, which we'll talk about perhaps a little bit later on? I would say that it's the two of, of them at the same time. It's, uh, that he's, he's, going, he's putting a big focus on uh, economy because he knows that the problem of identity is very link, linked to the fact that there is a high level of unemployment. And you can see that in the areas in France where unemployment is very high, like the north of France, for example, in Roubaix, there are lots of problems of identity. So he wants to focus first on economy. And he's going to be str very strict as well on the identity side because we know that we have to be firm. All right. Uh, we can show a report now uh, uh, about uh, what's going to happen in the second round because you have uh, uh, still uh, uh, François Fillon who has to face up against Alain Juppé, uh, the former uh, foreign minister and prime minister in his own right, uh, way back in uh, 1995, uh, Alain Juppé, the mayor of Bordeaux, who, as Bruno Cotteres was saying, taking a more centrist tack than Fillon when it comes to these ideas. François Fillon, a staunch conservative, and Alain Juppé, a centre-right moderate. The two former prime ministers both want to increase working hours, abolish wealth tax and increase the retirement age. But Fillon has taken his policies a step further. An admirer of Margaret Thatcher, he wants to cut at least half a million public sector jobs, whereas Alain Juppé wants to scrap 200,000. Juppé wants to bring back the 39-hour working week. Fillon wants to set the limit at 48 hours, the maximum authorised by EU law. The winner of the first round of primaries has pledged to reduce public spending by 100 billion euros. His rival remains vague on the subject. But when it comes to foreign policy, the two candidates are worlds apart. The MP for Paris is for the lifting of sanctions on Moscow after its annexation of Crimea. He also wants to cooperate with the Kremlin on the Syrian war and work together with Bashar al-Assad to defeat the Islamic State group. The mayor of Bordeaux is a harsh critic of Russia, condemning its bombardment of Aleppo and its allegiance to the Syrian regime. Juppé insists that there will be no return to peace in Syria with Assad in power. Uh, just a question about that deficit issue, because it was uh, when Fillon was prime minister, uh, he um, made a plan to cut the deficit by 30 billion, and now he's talking about 100 billion. Why didn't he do more when he was prime minister? When he explained that, he says that at the time, French people were maybe not ready to such a high level of uh, reforms. Um, so they had to make compromise. And I, th I think he's, com he's really completely sure that now French people are able to understand that th the 35 hours a week, for example, didn't work because we had these 10 years working, showing that it has not helped uh, employment, for example. So now... French people are really able to understand that that was not the right option. Philippe, Philippe Moreau Chevrolet, let me, let me ask you, because uh, this, this pledged for some tough medicine when it comes to tightening the budget. In 2012, neither candidates really made it. And uh, uh, this time around, is it what the French want to hear? 
And the French on the right, yes, but we don't know whether it will be, it will be able, François Fillon would be able to govern on that basis or not, because each time you try to do it, each time you've got a strong reaction in the streets and uh, eventually the government backs, up, backs out, I mean, wants out of this situation. It's not, n no government so far has been successful in applying this tough medicine to the French economy because of the social resistance in the street. That's really the question tag. Uh, whether they will be successful doing it or not. Bruno Cotres? Yes, I think that the issue is quite complex first. When we talk that France needs reforms, no one agrees in France in the meaning, on the meaning, what do we mean by reforming France? For some people, François Fillon or the candidate of the right, to reform France is going to adapt France to globalization, to make it, for, make it for flexible, uh, more competitive. But if you talk to the left, reforming France means to make France more just, fighting against social inequalities. And I was amazed that during the three debates, the word inequality have been never pronounced by any candidate. It is like if we are living in a country where you don't have inequalities between male and female, between young and old, between those having patrimony and those not having anything. So those kind of issues will be back at the time of the presidential campaign. It will not be the same story as for yeah. the primary. It is two different elections. Yes. Two different elections between the, the, the primary and the general election, uh, Philippe Morochevoli. If ever François Fillon makes it to the second round of the presidential election, there will be a confrontation between him and Marine Le Pen, probably. And Marine Le Pen will be all about protection against globalization. And um, François Fillon has the, the chance to appear as the candidate of the globalization and the candidate of everything that uh, the French people are fed up with. Mm. So it's really a tough situation for him to, succeed, to be succeed in his transformation into a real presidential candidate that the France wants now. And it's not obvious that he will be able to do it. Alain Juppé would have been even weaker, I guess, but uh, we don't know. Yeah. All right, we'll pick up on those points when we come back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 today.